All right, so here's a quick video on the updated auto layout here within the May update, May, 20, uh, May 2022 update here in Figma. And so we're gonna get started and we're just gonna do this from scratch and I'll show you how to create um, a component that also has a variant that is a responsive variation of the card that we're gonna design. So it's a little tricky, uh, but once you get the hang of this stuff, uh, it becomes a lot easier. And doing it in this way makes it easier um, when you're dealing with a big UI, UX project, um, where you have a bunch of responsive uh, you know, art frames to deal with. Um, and this will really make your components flexible. So let's get started. Um, let's just do a desktop here for now. Um, I'll probably just make it a little bit smaller, something like that. And we'll just give uh, maybe like a bluish sort of background. Yeah, something like that, maybe desaturate a little bit. There we go, that's good. And we're gonna create a real quick uh, design for a card, all right? So at the top, it's just gonna have um, like a rectangle. I'm going to use the Unsplash plugin. You can go ahead and install that, it's free just for finding photographs, uh, mountain lion. All right, so let's just use, um, eh. Let's just use this one right here. So we'll click that one. All right. And then what we'll do is we're gonna have some rounded corners. So I'm just using 10 there. And uh, I want a little bit more contrast, so let's take this and make it darker. That's better. Okay, and we are gonna take these bottom ones right here. So I'm gonna hold Alt and right click and drag that one. And then for some reason I have to hit Control. I don't like that. It should be all, all the way around, but whatever. So now we have that. Um, let's go ahead and then we'll just duplicate this with Alt, Shift, and just move down. We're going to get rid of the image. We will make this white. And then we're gonna reverse this concept. So this over here, this over there, and then we can pull these in. I Make sure that's 10, there we go. And then this one as well at 10 as well. Okay, so now inside of it, we're gonna have um, some type. Oh, and by the way, uh, we'll take both of these and just kind of expand them out just so I have a little bit more room to work with. And we'll take our type tool. Uh, so we're just gonna put in mountain uh, lion. Now, honestly, that's not a mountain lion, that's a freaking lion, <laughs> but whatever, no big deal. Um, let's let's right align this. Uh, we'll make this, um, we'll just use our, our favorite font ever, Poppins. We'll make it bold uh, and we'll make it larger. And we'll reduce that letting or that line height. Yeah, something right around here is fine. I think I might wanna go a little bit larger. Yeah, let's just go like semi-bold, okay. That's good. Now let's duplicate that. Shift, Alt, right, move over. Um, we're gonna make this maybe like 14 or something. And then we'll take this, make this regular. Um, we'll use our Lorem Ipsum generator text thingy. Um, so let's right click that. Let's not do that. Let's come over here, right click. Lorem Ipsum, where are you at? There you are. It's just auto generate. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with really f small sizes here. Um, really, this should be like 30. We'll take both of these, make this larger. Whenever you, you deal with this and you're thinking like, wow, my font sizes are so small, but they look big still, it's just because you're not uh, designing correctly with uh, enough, like your, your elements aren't big enough, essentially. So let's just make that bigger, move that over here. 14 still looks really large, which is strange. No big deal. We'll just left line this. Um, just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna get ourselves a little bit more to work with. Lorem Ipsum right here, we'll do that one more time. Uh, Auto-generate, okay, that's a lot better. So, not too happy with the white space just yet. Let's uh, kind of get that close together in terms of height. Um, let's move this, these two out slightly more. All right, so overall, I'm pretty happy with that. One last final thing that I'll do as well is we'll get out um, Iconify, which is another free plugin. And I, I've typed in add for a search and we'll just use this one. 
So we'll drag that on. Now I do want to have a white background behind it, but we're going to put this like right here. And this is going to demonstrate one of the new features of auto layout. So we're going to hit O for the ellipse tool. We're going to make that white and just put it at the bottom in that frame. All right, so we'll take these two, maybe situate them right around there. And then there we go. We have a quick card. We could probably beef that up a little bit there. And yeah, so here's our card design. Um, so what I'm gonna do before we demonstrate this, I'm gonna just take, take a copy um, of the original design off the side, just in case you screw something up, especially when you're starting out learning how to use auto layout constraints and alignment and all that stuff, you, you're gonna have a hard time. Uh, so it's a good idea to take your original design before you start screwing around with it, making it a component, et cetera, just put it off to the side. So now what we'll do is um, we're going to take these three elements right here, um, these two text elements are basically inside of this container right here, right? So if we take these three and select them, you can see it gives us the option of auto layout right up here. However, if we took all of these as well, like the, the, the plus button, that goes away. So um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna add auto layout just with those couple in and of themselves, all right? so. Now, if we take this, for instance, and we move it there, it's going to throw it off, right? It's gonna add it as just another item within this auto layout. Now, the new feature that they've added is right up here, this little button right there. And what that allows us to do is to absolutely position this element. So now it's still within the context of this auto layout. Um, and you can see it's in frame one, it's, it's still right here with those type layers. If we move this down, now one thing you have to be careful of, if you move it out of the layout frame, it's gonna remove it from auto layout. So we're just gonna get it close there and then use our keyboard down arrow key so that that doesn't happen. There, so now what we have to ask ourselves, what behavior do we want from this particular um, auto layout frame in a sense? So for me, we should it should maintain padding based on the content um, of this description area. So if I add some more lines of text, it's not responding. So we have to set that up correctly. So the first thing we'll do is we'll double click into here to gain access to this type layer. And we're going to change this here to from fixed up here for the height section to hug contents. And there you go, now it's pushed that down. Um, now, before we do that, let's also create, uh, let's include this element right here um, inside of a auto layout um, with both of these selected. So what we'll do is take this, we'll do auto layout. Uh, we're also going to create a component out of it. All right, so now if we start to move things around, let's see what happens. Now, usually when you create a component or you start adding things, uh, things could start to get broken. Now, for this, we want it to stay at the bottom, right? So um, we're gonna move this back down here to where we want it. All right, and then we're gonna change the constraints from top to bottom. All right, so now if we double click this, it's gonna stay there based on uh, the actual content. Now, additionally, we wanna double click in here, and if we extend this out, we kinda of want both of these to behave correctly. So this right here, it says fixed. We're gonna keep the height fixed, but we wanna fill container. There we go. So now that's gonna fill. Now if we double click here, we wanna change this here to fill container as well. And if we push this out, that's pretty good, but this should also be responding. So if we double click into our type layer, we can see it says fixed, uh, we could do hug contents, or no, not, not hug contents, fill container. So now, if we take this whole element and we could see now how it's responding, that's exactly what we want. So as you can see, it's a, it's, it's a matter of understanding how to use these two options up here, the fixed hug contents, and sometimes additionally it'll say fill container on your horizontal and vertical uh, resizing axis. Um, and then also auto layout, understanding how to use this stuff and constraints as well. So now that we have this component working for this context, let's create a 
component variant right here. So this is also a new um, part of the UI. So when you've created a component, you can add a variant right here. And if you don't know what a variant is, it's basically just a way to really customize your uh, your components and make them interactive and make design differences and changes. So let's say for instance, we wanted to create a variant that's uh, for mobile, like, like really small uh, widths essentially. Well, what we could do is just take this and our, we change our auto layout direction to downwards like that. Now it's kind of hidden down here, we can't see it. So let's expand this out. All right. Now we're going to double click back into this uh, auto layout frame, so to speak. And what we want to do is change a few things so that where this is fixed, it's going to change to hug contents. Now we're going to double click into our type layer. We're going to change that from fixed to hug contents. There we go. So that's much better right there. Now, additionally, if we take this, I, we're going to choose to align this in the center. We'll also take our type, center align that as well, center align this, and we could probably stand to move this over here in the middle. We can double click here and we can reduce the amount of white space because there's a little bit too much. And that looks pretty good to me. So it looks a little silly because it's pretty wide. Uh, but if we move this in, all right, so another thing is we want to change this from left to, let's see, I, I believe it would be center or left and right, but we need to reset it here. So let's try this left and right. Nope, we don't want to do that. See, I'm still, still trying to figure this out myself as much as possible. There we go. So we want to change that alignment to center or the constraints. All right. So now we can just call this uh, small card or something like that. And if we go to our assets, we drag this in. This is our original. I uh, This might be enough space for maybe two cards in the context of a design, but Let's say for instance, we're working on like a, a mobile viewport. So let's duplicate this and let's bring this into maybe more of like a, a phone. We could take this and change the property to small card and look at that. It just works exactly as you'd expect it to. So we could add like three of them next to each other, just like that. Awesome, awesome stuff. As you can see, it's incredibly flexible once you start to understand how to be able to, to use those constraints, uh, the alignment and auto layout. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout.